and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got a classic Sudoku for you today and a very unusual way that we're going to be presenting this one, because I've been advised to start this video by putting this puzzle into a computer solver and then showing you that the computer solver can't solve it without using basically bifurcation. And then my challenge is going to be to solve it obviously using some sort of logical technique, which sounds incredibly daunting, um, and I have no clue how I'm going to do this, but we shall see, and but don't worry, if I, if I do mess it up, I have a couple of other puzzles on the back burner, uh, which I will, I will try and record instead. So you may never be seeing this video, um, and it's called Steering Wheel, the puzzle, by the way, by Sudoku Explorer, who's publishing puzzles on Logic Masters Germany, I, th I know for the last few months, uh, often to absolutely rave reviews. So this should be a very interesting challenge. I'm certainly looking forward to trying it. Um, but before we kick off, a couple of things to mention. Some of you have been asking when I'm going to be live streaming my attempts to solve a puzzle game called The Witness again. Um, well, my current plan is Tuesday night. It does look like there is a window for Tuesday night, so probably around 10 o'clock in the evening. UK time. Uh, that's when I'm going to try and do that. So uh, keep an eye out if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, and the other thing we wanted to mention is that we aren't that far away now from the extraordinary total of 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. These are numbers that we could not have dreamt about. Um, but we were trying to think about what we should do if we get to 400,000 by way of a thank you. Um, and Mark suggested we might do a video where you guys can ask us questions and then we'll answer them. Uh, you can ask us anything you like um, within reason. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so if you do want to ask us a question, send us an email to crackingthecryptic at gmail.com. And um, if you aren't subscribed and you do enjoy the channel, please consider subscribing and trying to get us up, nudge us up towards that total. It will make us very, very happy if we ever get there. Um, so, yeah, that's just something to mention. Now, with all that said, let's get on to steering wheel. Um, I guess this does actually resemble a sort of wheel, doesn't it? Um, uh, by Sudoku Explorer. And I'll read you the rules. Here we go. Normal Sudoku rules apply there. I've done it. Um, so nothing more complicated than that. Now I put it into a solver. I put it into Andrew Stewart's solver, which is basically the only solver I know about online. So apologies if there are other ones I should be using. Um, and you can see down the right hand side, it's basically got a whole load of very uh, well, progressively more complicated techniques, many of which I have no clue what they are. 3D Medusa, for example, doesn't ring any bells with me at all. Exocet, I do know from a shy puzzle actually that I covered on the channel. When I say no, I sort of, I sort of backed into it. Um, I do know what empty rectangles are, but these things down here, these are the things I've been told to turn off: digit forcing chains, initio forcing chains, self forcing chains. Basically, forcing chains are what I consider to be bifurcation or good -lifisms. So we've turned off good -lifisms on the basis that I don't like to solve puzzles using good -lifisms. And I'm going to click grader. OK, so this is telling us that this puzzle is very hard. I don't know what that means, to be honest. Um, I'm not surprised it's very hard. Um, but it, yeah, so it's very hard. That's what we know. And now I'm going to try and make the computer solve it. Um, so let's try and do this. I, don't, I think I have to click the next step button um, repeatedly until it gets stuck. And it's not getting stuck at the moment, so... Okay, it's still not got stuck. It's still doing things. Oh, it's doing some more things. Come on, get stuck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, well, it looks like it's very nearly stuck. It's gone all the way to the bottom, something called a pattern overlay method. I've got no idea what that is. Um... Right, and now it is stuck. OK, so there we go. I think that the, the point of this is just to show you that even with an absolute multitude of techniques that you probably only spot if you're a computer, you can't solve the puzzle without guessing. Except that's what I'm being asked to do, which seems a bit mean. But anyway, let's, let's have a look at this. In some ways, actually, it's interesting to me because I can almost... Um, disregard some of the things I would normally do when I solve um, 
when I solve classic Sudokus. So let's just have a look around the grid and see what we can do. Twos have got to be in one of those squares. I've only got two twos in the grid. Threes have got... Okay, so th this is the wheel. This is the steering wheel straight away. That's really cool, actually. Look at the uh, disposition of ones. They lock a one into those. Twos are locked into those. Threes are locked into those. And fours are locked into those. Now, to me, and I admit I am a bit strange, that sort of feels like it's completing the steering wheel. So I have no idea what that means in terms of solving, but it did seem quite interesting. Fives. Uh, no. The computer did get a digit. I should have made note of what that digit was. Um, oh dear, dear, dear. Sorry about this. I am not... Ah, uh, sevens. Look, we can put a seven in one of those squares. Seven in one of these squares. Seven in one of these squares. Ah, there we go. There we go. We've got the digit the computer got. Sevens. Sevens in this square here. That's got to be a seven by Sudoku. Now, seven has got to be in one of those two squares. Eights. We have got three eights. Eight may be the most sort of profligate digit in the grid. Eights have got to be in one of these two squares. Eights have got to be in one of those two squares. Eights have got to be in one of these two squares. Eights have got to be in one of those two squares. Ah, eights have got to be in one of these two squares as well. Oh, sorry, no, I thought that might be more helpful, but no. I've only got two nines in the grid. Basically, we've only got two of an awful lot of numbers. Nines have to be locked into one of these two squares. So, okay. Now, ordinarily, if I was solving a puzzle and I did this and got to this point, what I would start to do... I was about to say I'd be looking for weak rows and columns, i.e. rows and columns and boxes where there are digits that are, you know, this square, for example, that looks mildly weak to me. And I say mildly weak because although I see that this, this, this cell here sees four different numbers, it sees the seven and the nine in the box, the eight and five in the row and the two and four in the column. So it has to be a one, three or a six. It's not, it's, it's only relatively weak. It's pretty pathetic. It's not really restricted, is it? And this is what I would do normally in a puzzle is I would try and find weak, weak cells on the basis of boxes, rows and columns. But we know because the computer failed, the computer would pick up, you know, anything like this instantly. So I, I sort of feel like this is a fool's errand. Um, and indeed, that my second port of call on hard, hard classics would then be to try and find digits that are that can only appear twice in a row column or well, really in a row or a column. I'm now trying to see an example of that just to see if I can uh, find a digit that can only appear. Uh, <laughs> I'm not doing very well. The problem is there are so few digits. It's actually or so, so few instances of multiple digits that it's not that surprising that I can't find very good examples here. Um, no, I still haven't got one. Sorry about this. I wondered whether I could do something with the one and the three here because there's a one and a three in these two squares. So if we think about where one and three go in row five, it's either here, here or here. So that's no use. It's nearly useful, but not quite. Um, wow. Wow. So, so yeah, I mean, the, the reason for looking for things that can only appear twice in a row, column or box is that that's, that's the basis for so many of the basic techniques like um, X-wings, empty rectangles, um, uh, skyscrapers, all of which, you know, they're patterns that I'm relatively familiar with and can sometimes handle in difficult puzzles. But here we know none of that, none of that is there because the computer would have found that. So I've got to be looking for something the computer doesn't understand, which basically means geometry, doesn't it? So there is going to be some geometric trick we can perform on this puzzle that 
computers really haven't yet been programmed to understand. Um, probably to do with the wheel somehow. Let me think about the wheel. What is this wheel of ones, twos, threes and fours meant to be telling us? Um, I don't know, I'm afraid. I, I suspected this is what might happen. Um, because I think this is going to be... You know, it's almost a game of guess, guess the geometric trick. So the standard, the most basic geometric trick, of course, is the Fistimafel ring, which is, which tells us that these cells, the purple cells, are equal to the green cells, which is an extraordinary thing if you've never seen it before, but it is true. But that's... Ah, no, no, no. Okay, I have got, I think I do see what this is. I do see what this is. That is that is that is actually reasonable. To be very fair, that is reasonable. You can see this because if you are familiar with geometry tricks, if you try, you'll look at the Fistimafel ring as I did then. Now, what's the what's the basic expansion of the Fistimafel ring? If we stretch the Fistimafel ring, where do we go next with that? Well, it, there's a technique that basically looks at these squares, and if this is if this is relevant, I will explain it, so worry not. There is an equivalence between these squares. Now that does look interesting because I can see all these digits are high and all these digits are, apart from that one, are low. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is actually beautiful. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So, this is definitely at least, it's definitely worth explaining. So I will now explain that, right, I realize I'm being completely ineloquent and I apologize for that. So let me try and correct my eloquence and bring, bring this to some sort of, into some sort of reasonable order. The purple squares, whatever digits are in the purple squares are identical to whatever digits are in the green squares. And if you've not seen that before, that may sound like complete magic. And it is in a way. It's very, but it's very understandable once you've seen it a couple of times. So let me try and explain why this is the case. We'll highlight those squares. Now these squares clearly, if we look at box one, that's definitely, if we correctly complete box one, it will contain all of the digits from one to nine once each. So this is one set of the digits one to nine. This is a second set of the digits one to nine. This is a third set of the digits one to nine. And this is a fourth set of the digits one to nine. So the purple squares contain four sets of the digits one to nine in some order. Now, let us um, consider what that column contains, that complete column. Well, obviously, that's a complete set of the digits 1 to 9. It's just one set of the digits 1 to 9. So the green cells I've highlighted are one set of the digits 1 to 9. Now, now I've highlighted two sets of the digits 1 to 9 in green. Now, if I highlight row 1 and row 9 as well, I've now highlighted four sets of the digits 1 to 9 in green if I count the corner green cells twice. Why do I count them twice? Well, it's because this cell here is definitely in column one and it's definitely in row one. So the green cells, if I count the corner cells twice, are exactly equal to four sets of the digits one to nine, which if we remember back is exactly what we said the purple cells were equal to. So what I can do is I can remove cells that have two colors, like this one, if I remove this cell from purple and I remove it from green, it's still obviously true to say the purple and the green cells are the same sets of digits. And I can, put, I can do that for all the cells that are 
Let's, I'll leave the corners to last because we have to think more carefully about the corners. All of those squares can come out of both purple and green. Now if we think about the corners, if I just cancelled out these corners and didn't do anything else, that wouldn't be quite correct because we have to think of the corners effectively as double green. So I can remove, I can remove, I can remove them a purple and a green from the corners but then I have to reinstate the green that was sort of underneath them because the greens counted for twice. And we end up with this situation where we should find we've got 16 purple cells, and we do, and we should have 16 green cells. There's 10, 13, 16, and we do. And we know that the purple and the green contain the same set of digits. And this is the geometry trick that I think is interesting because if we look at the purples, we have got eight high digits in purple. Therefore, I've got to put those eight high digits in purple in green. Well, where can they go? I've got eight low digits in green. So that, that all of the rest of the cells in green that are not the low digits must be high digits in order for the geometry of this Sudoku grid to work. So those squares there are six, seven, eight and nine in some order. I don't know where they go yet, apart from we know this one by the rules of basic Sudoku. And of course, all of these squares in purple, it works exactly the same way in reverse. We know that there are low digits in green that have to therefore appear in purple. And the only place all these low digits can go is in these little two by twos. So they are a one, two, three, four in some order. And now this is what I'm hoping the computer didn't know. And does it matter that we know this? Let's try and tidy up our pencil marks and see if we can spot what this means. Um, six and eight here, so I can remove six and eight from this one. Seven and nine here, so I can remove nine from this one. Six and eight here, that's not doing anything. Nine and seven here, so this is not nine. Um, now the other thing we might want to think about here is five, because five, as a result of all this uh, jiggery pokery, we've basically removed five as a possibility from every single coloured cell in the grid. So here, yeah, okay. So now we can ask where five goes in box three. It's got to be in one of those two squares. Now this is going to go around the grid. Now where does five go? In box one, it's got to go in one of those squares. Where does five go in box seven? Oh, no, no, hang on. No, where does five go in box seven? It goes there by Sudoku. That is, that, now this digit is a hard one, beautiful digit. Because this digit we couldn't get before. I see, yeah, the simpler way of thinking about this digit, look, is look at this five. Once this square can't be a five, You've got to put a five in one of those three squares. And now five by Sudoku is here. And we didn't know that. We couldn't have got that without being able to eliminate five from this cell. And the only reason we could rule five out from this cell is because of the mad geometry trick. So I'm now feeling like I might be able to solve this puzzle if this keeps going. So we've now got... Um, now we've got... What have we got here? Have we got anything very helpful. Right, so I'll tell you one thing that's strange, and that's these ones, twos, threes, and fours in the corner, in the corner boxes, don't actually see any other ones, twos, threes, and fours, because we never get, we never got given any ones, twos, threes, and fours in any, any of boxes one, three, seven, and nine. Uh... Oh, goodness me, I'm so sorry. I'm not. I'm just not quite spotting. I have a horrible feeling there are going to be sort of three or four just digits we can write into the grid here. That can't be a seven. And I'm just not seeing where they are. Ah! Oh, goodness me. Okay. Uh, maybe... Maybe we do what? I don't know. Ah, yeah. Ah, 
Right, no, let's come back to my 1-3 pair, because I've now got a 1-3 pair, which I didn't have before. This 1 and 3 here, we had to put in row 5, and they could have gone in that square, that square, and that square. Well, they can't go here anymore, so that that is now a 1-3 pair. So this 1-3 pair here is actually, it yields a hidden pair in row 5. Now this must be important. Come on, let's get <laughs> let's get something from this. So I've, I'm now wondering whether whether I've got sort of low high colouring to do in column three. I just need one more cell that can only be one two. That can only be. I know the problem is this could be a high did. Can that be a? Could only be seven if it's if it's a high digit, but it, if it's a low digit, it could be three or four. So I think that's three, four or seven. I might be wrong about that, but I think it sees six, eight, nine. It sees one, two in the row and it sees five. But I, oh, hang on now, I've got a seven pencil marked into those squares. Oh yeah, which is fair enough, so that can't be 7. Right, let's check this digit again. 1 and 2 are ruled out. 3 and 4 we're saying is possible. 5 is not possible. 6 is not possible. 7 is not possible. 8 and 9 not possible. This is 3 or 4. Right, so now I've got a quadru... Uh, yes, I have got a quadruple in column 3 on the digits 1, 2, 3 and 4. So those two squares... Oh, that would have been a simpler way of seeing this. This is a 6, 7 pair. Yes, oh, I see. So this six here, what we could have said if we'd been sensible is that there's a six in one of those three squares and therefore, where do we put a six in box um, in box four? It's got to be in one of those two squares which where it joins its friend the seven to make a pair. Now that means that square is not a six. So six, seven, eight, nine, Um, so these are ones, threes, eights, and nines. So this square is a th three or a nine, I think. I don't see what this means. Oh, good grief! Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe we're wrong. Maybe the computer is still going to win the battle here because. I feel sure that what we did, this is an amazing, it's an amazing thing and I can't remember seeing, I'm sure I must have seen geometry applied in a classic before like this, but it really is very beautiful. But what I'm not sure about is what to do with this. How do we force, how do we force more deductions? So I've got to put, yeah, okay, that's that's something I hadn't really thought about. If you look at the purple squares, I've got two sixes, I've got two sevens, I've got two eights, and I've got two nines. So I've got two of every high digit that I have to put in the greens. So are there any, are any of these digits difficult. So for example, I've got to put two sixes and two eights. Is there some way of saying they have to be different digits then? Or maybe they have to be the same digits? Don't think so. Um, Sixes. Oh, good grief. I don't know. I've got a bad feeling I'm not appreciating some some little facet of this that would help me to solve it. This one three pair is bugging me as well. Maybe this row. I've got to put two, four, six, eight, nine. So that square there is a 2, 4 or a 6. 
two, four, eight, nine here. That can't be an eight, look. This has got to be just six or nine. I could have, um, there's a Y wing that would have allowed me to remove a 9 from this square, but that you can see is completely useless. This 6 or 8 here, if that's a 6, this square's a 9. If it's an 8, this square's a 9. So these two squares, we know at least one of them is a 9, and they're both looking at that square. Ah, right, okay, that's interesting. I've got something. Okay, that is weird. Nine, eight, six. Yeah, that is weird. Okay, well, that square cannot be a nine. Ah, that's going to give me a nine here. Right, look at this square. So the question I was asking, I was thinking about nines, basically, uh, off the back of this sort of, well, this failed Y-wing pointing at this square. Now, this square can't be a nine because if it's a nine, that square has to be a nine as well. And that means we couldn't put a nine in this box. Now, how do we see that? Well, we see it just by unwinding the Y-wing. So if this is a nine, that's eight, that's six, and that's nine. That's just what we were looking at with this square. So you, but you can't put two nines in those two squares, because if you do, look where our nines are pencil marked in box nine. There would be nowhere for a nine. So that's not nine. And that's interesting because now I get a six, eight pair here, which is beautiful, but more beautiful than that even is that now the nine in this column has to be in one of those squares. And that means this, this must be a nine and we have another digit. So this is probably the second hardest one digit in Christendom. Um, and that means that's a nine, just by Sudoku, which means that's not a nine. Now we have to hope that that is the end of the jiggery pokery, and we can we can we can solve it from here. So now I can see those. Ah, this is interesting. Those two squares here are a two-four pair. Look, they've got to be two low digits, and they t they are two and four, which means that those squares are not two and four. So now we know what these three squares are. These are a five, six, eight, triple. And that is not six. And this is not eight. Five, six, eight. And that gives me a seven here by Sudoku, which gives me a nine here. Now that's a seven if I trust my pencil marks, and I do. Um, this is an eight. Oh, come on. This eight is giving me a six over here, which is giving me an eight, five, eight six up here that's not six anymore please yeah now now where does eight go there are four eights looking into this box and whenever you get four of the same digit looking into a box you can fill in that digit we must have almost done all the eights well yes look we can put six in here and that means that squares an eight and now oh no we can't do all the eights look we're going to get left with a little x wing of eights there rats um okay well let's right these two squares now are a three four pair which means those two squares are a one two pair and that means we know these two squares have to have a seven in them so that's a seven that's a five now we know these two squares i suppose these two squares have got to be... Oh, this is so strange. It's really beautiful. So we keep getting low pairs going round the steering wheel as we turn that way. And that's... It's not resolving, but it's it's affecting all of the low digits that go in the purples, look. So now those two squares are a 1-2 pair, which means those two squares are a 3-4 pair. And mm, nine. Now that's interesting. Where does nine go in box two? It goes in those squares. So that's an eight-nine pair. 
three, four, five, and six to place you rotten thing. That's a three or a four. These ones are three, four, five, or six. I think that's not three. That's not four. I've uh, just got a quadruple there. That's nothing. It's not helpful. Um, what about... What about... I don't know. What about sevens? If we do, oh, hang on. I've got two sevens here. That's not going to work, is it? How did I do that? That's bad. Surely I'm meant to type in five there. Let's just delete that. Yes, okay. I will give myself a bit of a break there. Uh, I was just looking at that triple thinking it had to be five, six, eight. And where was the five in it? Well, it should have been here. I misclicked it. But I didn't use this digit for anything. So I'm fair. I think we're still good to go. Sevens. No, so the sevens are in an X wing in those squares. The eights are in an X wing in those squares. What about nines? So the nines have to be in one of these two cells. And we don't actually know very much about nines in box five. Sixes. Six has to be in one of these two cells. This is not giving up. Two, two, four, and nine into this. Oh, that's no use. Two, four, or nine. This square. Ah, you rotten thing, bobbins. This is one, three, or nine. That's only okay. That can only be one or nine because it sees three. So look at. It's almost like this. This column has been designed to be difficult. If we look at the digits we've not placed. The 1 can go in 2 positions, the 2 can go in 2 positions, the 3 can go in 2 positions, the 4 can go in 2 positions, and you've guessed it, the 9 can go in 2 positions. Everything can go in 2 positions. Hmm, okay. Okay. Um, four. Right, okay, there is something, maybe. One, two. Uh, maybe. May hang on a minute, maybe not. Um... That's three, that's one, four, two. Wow, okay, that's, that's horrible. That is horribly tricky. Um, so, is it likely I'm gonna find anything better than this? This is the question I'm now wrestling with about whether I'm even prepared to show you what I've just found there, because that is very close to chaining, in my opinion. Um, is there another way of thinking about this? So I found a way, I think, of making this square have to be a 1. Um, and the way I got that was noting that if this square is a 3, you get a 1 here. And if this square is a 4, you get a 1 here. So one of these two squares, at least, has to be a 1, and therefore this has to be a 1. But it's a bit indirect, because it's very easy to see if this is a 3, this is a 1. It's less easy to see if this is a 4, this is a 1, because you have to go via the medium of the 2 there to get me the 1 here. So it's a, it's a step removed. Um, it's a sort of if-this-then-that type analysis. Uh, and I got that by I was trying to find bent triples um, or Y wings in the grid, which this most certainly isn't. Um, but it's sort of an indirect Y wing. It probably has a name, but I don't know what the name is. It's an indirect Y wing. It's like a finned Y wing by virtue of that square. Um, 
I think I'd well, there may be something easier, and everybody in the comments will no doubt point out what I've what I've missed here. But I think the point is that one of these two squares has to be a one. And there may be a better way of showing that. But that means this square can't be a one, so that's gonna to have to be a three. And let's see if that does damage. I fear it no, I was about to say I fear it might not, but actually I think it might be okay. Because look, this three yeah, this three is actually doing a lot of work in box four, but it's also result revolving or resolving, I should say, some stuff up there. And that's going to go round the steering wheel. Aha! There we go. Three, one, one, two. And more to the point, that's a nine and that's a one. And now this is a nine, which means that can't be a nine. It's the only place for a nine in the box, I think. Now there's a nine in one of these two squares. This two, I think the low digits are almost going to be filled in in the puzzle, aren't they? They are, this is, so the whole perimeter is now being done. Um, okay, but, so what are those digits? Ah, oh, we can place one look in this box and these two digits have got to be two and six and we can do that using the two at the top. which means those squares have to be five and eight in some order. Okay, and there's an eight here, so that's not too tricky. We can do the eight, we can do the five, we can do the eight at the top, we can do the nine. We can get the nine in box five, and with our nines, I think, are now fully done, which is a relief. Um, now this five is removing itself from this square, so this square's got to be three, four, or six, and it sees three and four, beautiful. So that's a six, that gives me a three, four pair here, which means that square's gonna be a five, that square's gonna be a six. It should only be, I was about to say something that's not right, is it? So this is two, four, and five into those squares, and that's not four, and that's not two, but the five could go in either place, okay? But that square, therefore, has got to be a three. And something's either wrong or I've not finished off. This cannot be correct. What am I missing? How has my scanning gone this badly wrong? I'm going crazy, though, with a six here. Good grief, Simon. Get a grip. <laughs> now, this square's a two or a five. What? And this four, oh, okay, that's why. So that's two, that's five, that's two, that's four, that's five. And this is four, and this is three, and this is four. And I think, yeah, we have done it. Wow. My goodness me, that was very, very difficult. Um, and I feel, what do I feel? I feel it's, it's, an, it's a beautiful puzzle, but it's devilishly tricky. Um, and I'm not sure, I feel like I cheated a bit, to be honest, because I knew at the start I had to look for geometry and I wouldn't have looked for geometry until I'd spent an awful long time on the puzzle. So from that perspective, I was lucky. Um, and once you have to look for geometry, I think this is very, very findable, to be fair, um, because it's, it's a relatively understood extension of the beautiful original Fistum of L ring and it's something we've seen on the channel relatively often. But after that, I think I found it very hard to understand. I got a digit down here, didn't I? And I got a one three pair that was useful. But after that, I really did struggle to understand quite how to use the logic inherent in the sets to really blast through the puzzle. So I'm gonna read the comments with interest, but this does go to show you that the computer might, the computer couldn't do this puzzle. We saw that at the start, the computer couldn't do that without bifurcation. We could do it um, with, with a bit of human ingenuity and well done to Sudoku Explorer for uh, explaining to us at least that human beings were still we're still the bee's knees <laughs> sometimes. And thanks so much for watching. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.